Hi guys, this is Steve with a quick demonstration of patch cutting in Dark Radiant. Start off with a basic use case, flat square patch. Select a few verts on any line that's got some pink verts on it and click scripts, split patch. That's now two separate patches and the join is seamless. It's a good idea to save your map before doing this by the way. You can use undo, I'll just do it now. You have to press it twice. But there's a side effect, undo will leave the verts you selected displaced a bit. Uh, so probably best not to rely on that and, and to save the map first instead. Right, cutting up something curved or complicated like a cone. It's a good idea to make sure you've fixed the subdivisions in the patch inspector first. Uh, because after you've cut it up, you've got no guarantee that the two halves will choose the same automatic tessellation. And in fact, with cones, they usually don't. Um, I'm now using a keyboard shortcut, by the way, just to save time. You'll find, it, you'll find the patch splitter on your keyboard shortcuts menu under split patch. So, a couple of cuts later, and we've done a pretty fair job of carving up that cone. Next up, a strange effect with spheres and cylinders. I just want to demo quickly. Um, much easier to carve up 3D objects like this in the camera view, by the way. In the ortho view, you get the verts on the other side of the object as well, of course. Right, that's been cut, but you can see the seam is clearly visible there. Uh, texture is much darker one side than the other. Don't know why that is, but it's nothing to worry about because it won't show up in game. It's just something to do with the way Dark Radiant shows the colours. Next, this is a use case suggested by Biker Dude. Spiral staircase in a cylindrical tower and you want to cut door holes in it. Have a look at this from above in ortho view. You'll see I've got some pink verts here where you'd normally have them. And I've got an extra pink vert here. I added two columns. It's really easy actually to get a cylinder to wrap around a circle like this if you've got something you can use as a template like the spiral stair. Just move the pink verts to exactly where you know you'll need them and then move the green verts to adjust where to adjust the fit. That always works. So on with cutting it up. Top of the door. Um, bottom of the door. Done. Right hand side of the door. And the left. Ah. That was the original seam of the cylinder, so again, it's just telling me I don't need to cut it there. Right, so now we've got a door shaped patch just where we want a hole to be. I have to go into the tower to be able to turn around and see our door. There it is. So we can delete that. Select the three remaining patches and thicken them as normal. And there we go. A solid cylindrical tower with a door hole of the right size. Final one I want to show is terrain. I'll just hide this patch that's on top. So I've got a roughly carved organic floor there with a basement or a courtyard or something here where we don't want to patch intruding. Um, the old way to do that would have been two separate patches which you bulge and then stitch them together but sometimes that's visible and it's awkward to do. Should be fairly obvious how the patch cutter is going to help with this. Um, one thing though, do bulge your patch first because then you don't have to worry about stitching or texture matching or alignment or anything. It'll all be done. Now we haven't got rows of pink verts right underneath our wall where we'd like them. You really will have. Uh, you can fix that with just a couple of extra cuts. So first up, I'm going to chop the patch there. Oops, wrong button. And here, and I'm going to make one extra cut here. Now that just leaves you with three flaps sticking through that you can easily tuck into the wall. And that's it for the demo.